As they say, anything is possible, even with timepieces. It's one of the beauties of collecting and enjoying them. You never know what to expect. However, all trends eventually come full circle, and everything has its time. Fortunately, watches rise above this grueling transience and, with only a few exceptions, are essentially timeless. But the vintage market does shift to some extent, and some designs or arrangements become in hot demand. Today, almost all watch companies offer timepieces with integrated bracelets. Some of these companies have developed entirely new lines, while others have revived classic styles for today's consumers. So why shouldn't Tudor provide its own spin on the popular sports watch with an integrated bracelet? The sporty chic with an integrated bracelet that was popular in the 1970s is currently more stylish than ever. This is unquestionable, and numerous brands from expensive to budget-friendly have decided to jump into the game to serve individuals looking for such a piece. We've witnessed a variety of alternatives being offered in a more reasonable sector of the industry, propelled by the market's passion for icons like the Royal Oak and the Nautilus. The most recent in line is Tudor, which earlier this year undoubtedly evoked the 1970s with its collection. The main attraction of the collection, the Tudor Royal Date Day 41mm with blue dial, gets some wrist time today. Welcome back to Above First Class. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The Royal is not a reissue of a previous model, in contrast to many watches in Tudor's lineup. Sure, the name has already been used, but the timepieces that had this name were very different from the sporty chic versions that are available now with integrated bracelets. Let's be perfectly clear, they were basic dress watches that only told the time. The new Tudor Royal Date Day 41mm nevertheless capitalizes on the vintage trend even though there isn't a particularly obvious relationship and no vintage model served as the basis for the design or at least on a look that several watch collectors now consider essential and was first popularized in the 1970s. It's no surprise that 2020 was the year it decided to make that move, considering how quickly every other watch that even loosely resembles this one is flying off the racks. Even Casio's G-Shock couldn't escape the demand for angular casings and integrated bracelets. Before criticizing Tudor for adopting this somewhat ridiculous trend, it's important to keep in mind that all that really matters is that people buy and like it. A watchmaker only needs to generate income in order to continue producing watches. They're not subject to our approval. Take a look at the exceedingly rare 1970 Rolex 5100 to see why this watch was designed in the first place if you need any more explanation for its inclusion in Tudor's collection. Yes, 1970, particularly before the 1976 Patek Philippe Nautilus and the 1972 AP Royal Oak. In an effort to compete with Japanese quartz technology, 20 different Swiss watchmakers came together to create the Beta 21 quartz movement, which was in the 5100. The Beta 21 was, as its name implies, an early and incomplete movement that drained quickly and wasn't especially compact. To fit inside a watch that combined the integrated design of the 5100 and its most famous model, the Rolex Datejust, Rolex decided to create its very own quartz movement, the Caliber 5035. The 1977 Oyster Quartz was the ultimate result. What does this have to do with Tudor? Because like many vintage Rolex models, a more inexpensive Tudor branded equivalent with an ETA movement was also available. The Tudor Oyster Quartz, which had all the characteristics of its more pricey sibling, is the direct ancestor of the Tudor Royal we know today. Is it great though? Well, obviously given that it is a Tudor, the Rolex subsidiary brand excels at creating high quality luxury watches. The watch has been made with a lot of attention to details, which most people would normally overlook. For instance, the tapered bracelet has links that are contoured rather than flat, coupled by thin polished links and secured by a large flip-lock clasp. Its 41mm blend with the steel case is rounded instead of straight, which gives it more definition and personality. The coin edge bezel transitions between polished squares and contrasting knurled creases. The dial is one of the finest you can get. It comes in black, blue, gold, silver, or mother of pearl, and is adorned with a brilliant sunburst effect, which helps to justify the title Royal. Although the name has appeared in the Tudor line before, this may be the best so far. The dial can also be ordered with diamonds in place of the Roman numerals found on a typical watch for an extra touch of regal flair. 
The biggest surprise about this watch, however, is not its existence, but more of the fact that it features a day-date complication that is exclusive to a model Rolex rarely produced in precious metal. The Rolex Day Date is referred to as the ultimate premium watch, although Tudor's entry-level model has the same functions. You also get, and we've never seen this with any other recent Tudor, a crown which strongly resembles an original Rolex. It's embossed with the Tudor shield and may be an homage to how closely the two companies' Oyster Quartz watches matched. As is to be expected with a product bearing the Rolex name, you may easily say that every aspect has been given careful consideration. The Royal is without a doubt an example of Tudor's uncanny ability to outperform all of its rivals in terms of build quality. It's practically anticipated at this time that it will dominate its competitors on every front. In an effort to outperform comparably priced watches, Rolex is operating smaller margins than it would otherwise do. This is done to bridge the gap created by its ever expensive premium brand. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Since Rolex is the brand people go for once they've found success, Tudor has evolved into the brand people wear when they're on their way. It clearly targets graduates, first-time bonus earners, and anyone else with aspirations. So how much is this Tudor Royal worth? While we are aware that Tudor already offers most of its watches at entry-level rates, and that this is the entry-level watch with a starting price at £1,660 for the 34mm version, appears much lower than anticipated. Spending everything on a 41mm version with real diamonds on the dial and authentic yellow gold on the bezel, crown, and bracelet center links would still only come to £3,000. And if none of these pairs appeal to you, there are still a lot more to choose from. Case sizes range from 28mm to 34 to 41mm, but keep in mind that only the 41mm version has the day complication. The case, bracelet, and dial are available in either steel or steel plus gold. Although we are aware that two grand isn't exactly pennies, we can't help but wonder whether this watch's reputation for being unnoticed is at least in part owing to its nearly excessively low price. You would be comparing against a Longinus or an Oris for almost the same price, two brands that both attempt and fall short of achieving the same level of prestige and charm that Tudor has amassed over the past several years. Both of those brands are excellent, there is nothing wrong with either one, but we already know which one the typical guy in the street would choose without having to ask. Tudor uses Solita movements instead of its own in-house movements, reflecting the brand's early days when Rolex sold them using ETA movements as an alternative, which contributes to some of the value. Beyond the Swatch Group brands, Solita has essentially taken the position of ETA, producing ETA movements whose designs have now hit the public arena. In order to satisfy a trend, Tudor has done the unexpected, which is something its parent company Rolex will never do. They went back in time to try and revive its 1970s back catalog. All things considered, the Tudor Royal Daydate 41mm is an unexpected fusion of sportiness and sophistication. Overall, the craftsmanship is top level and consistent with all Tudor models, particularly given the affordable pricing. The watch's design also does have a specific consistency, despite being a matter of personal choice. It's a lovely watch with vintage elegance, but it needs a little bit of charm and flair. The well-designed case and bracelet combination would benefit from a somewhat sportier dial or a new pattern for the bezel. However, nothing that Tudor can't fix in the next versions. What do you guys think of Tudor's solid entry-level luxury watch? Please let us know in the comments section below, and if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.